Hi, Steve D'Agostino here. Today I'm going to help you get started with the new Raspberry Pi Picos Python IDE known as Fani. So you've decided to learn about microcontrollers and programming electronics. That's awesome because you know, there's a whole lot of fun and exciting things to do in this realm, but for some it can be a little bit overwhelming when first getting started. Don't worry, the newest iteration of microcontrollers from the Raspberry Pi Institute is here, and it's about the size of a stick of gum. Welcome to the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now before we get started working with the Pico, there are a few things that you need to know. So this tutorial is not meant to be an exhaustive lesson on the Pico itself, but there are some different variations that will come in handy to understand as you're getting things set up. There are two primary variations of the Pico and two ways that you can receive the processor. So the two versions are wired and wireless. And you'll notice here on the wireless, you see this Pico W. Um, and it, the two ways they ship are both with and without headers pre-soldered onto the board. So the traditional formats are the Pico with no headers and Pico H with the headers pre-soldered into these holes right here, okay? And the wireless versions are the Pico W, as I pointed out down here, and the Pico WH. Now this is important when we get to selecting and installing the proper Python interpreter for Thani, which is the Integrated Development Environment, or IDE, used to write the Python code that will control the devices used in your Pico projects. All right, so with that out of the way, Let's jump into Thani, where you'll make all the magic happen. So once you've connected your Pico to your computer, you'll need to download the Thani installer from their website at here. It's Thani.org. Okay. Um, now from there, you'll see a box on the main page where you can download the package for Windows, Mac, or Linux. Now. While there's a download link for Linux, we'll focus on Mac and Windows as, you know, the typical beginner is not likely to be on a Linux platform and there's really no need to add any complexity in this tutorial, okay? Another thing I'll assume uh, is that you don't currently have Python installed on your computer and that you'll use the full installation package with Python included, okay? So first off, <clears throat> let's start with Mac since the process is about as straightforward as it gets. So for Mac users, it's just a matter of clicking the link to download and initiate the installation. Yeah, that's it, easy peasy, right? And with Windows, the process depends partly on what browser you typically use. So if you're using Firefox, Chrome, or some clone thereof, like personally, I like to use Brave, you see this down here, um, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's generally a, a pretty simple process. Um, but if you use Microsoft Internet Explorer, first of all, get a new browser. Um, but all kidding aside, if you use either IE or Microsoft Edge, which is what I'm currently on here, um, you might run into a smart screen filter issue. Oop, sorry about that. So the smart, the sorry, the smart screen filter was introduced initially with Windows 8 in order to make it more difficult to download and install malware onto your system. It's known to flag Thani as unsafe sometimes. It's fairly rare, but it's something that you could potentially run into. Okay, so if it does happen, there are a couple of ways to move forward. All right, so first of all, So we can get rid of these ads here. All right, so <clears throat> if that happens, then you'll get this little alert that says, you know, this unsafe thing is downloading. And so what you would just do is you go to your downloads and you'll get this window that says to either not run the application or to run it anyway. Um, if you see that, obviously Thani is safe. It just might not be recognized. Um, in that case, you're just going to hit run anyway and go on ahead and start moving forward, okay? The other option there is just to go to your downloads folder and just run the program from there. If you're prompted, um, 
like you were before uh, or like I showed you before, you know, do you want to, um, when you do run anyway, if you get the question, like, do you want to run this file or are you sure you want to run this file, just click run and you're good to go, okay? Um, again, it's a totally safe file, but sometimes with the, um, with the smart screen filter, if you're downloading and running an exe file that your computer has never seen before, then you may run into this issue. Now you do also have the option of turning off your smart screen filter if you want. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you do that, but if you're going to, then you're going to go to your Windows security app. You're going to go to app and browser control, which you have either on the side or this button here. Under reputation based protection, you'll see that you have smart screen for Microsoft Edge or for Microsoft Store apps, and you can just toggle that on and off as you see fit. Okay? All right. So, what we're going to do is we're going to run this. Now, I'm on a 64 bit uh, system here, so I'm just going to click here. Um, now, I already have Thani installed on my computer. I'm not going to make you wait for the actual installation to happen, but this is what the interface looks like as you're going through the process. You might want to create a desktop icon for it um, just because it can be difficult to find, um, and then you'll install. Now again, I'm not going to click install and make you wait for that. I'm just going to go on ahead and bring it up. Okay. Alright, so once you have downloaded and installed Thani and are running the program, I want you to take a look down here at the lower right hand corner. Okay, so uh, as I think I mentioned earlier in the video here, my Pico is actually connected to my Mac, which is in a different location. So we're not going to see all the same things here. Uh, I don't have anything configured here. This is, uh, this is a fairly fresh install from earlier this morning. But we're going to click on this configure interpreter here. In there, you'll see a drop down. And you'll see these uh, micro Python for Raspberry Pi Pico or RP2040, which you'll see the RP2040 is the Pico, so, um, so you don't need to worry about that. Uh, it's this, you can pick either one of those two and it'll work just fine. Now, if you do have the Pico W, then just select whether you, uh, you'll select the one that, uh, that says Pico W or WH, okay? I'm not gonna worry about actually installing anything here because I don't have the Pico connected um, <clears throat> now, when you do connect your, um, okay, when you do connect your Pico, uh, particularly this wired one here, if you don't see, if you don't see it on your computer, right, if you, if you don't see it come up as a drive available for you to store things, or if, um, if you click in here and you know, you see an alert that says that there is no valid target, then what you may need to do is you may need to unplug your Pico and hold this button right here. It says boot cell. You may need to hold that button down and then plug it back in while holding the button down. And then when you release the boot cell button, you should see it appear. All right. Now, once we get that, um, once we get the correct Python interpreter installed, you are pretty much good to go, all right? So the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to look at configuration options, all right? So now for most intents and purposes here, um, you know, Thani's default configurations will get the job done for programming your Pico. All right. Now that said, you may not like the theme and font options. Now, I wasn't a big fan of the defaults. Uh, the defaults actually kind of look like this. Uh, I think that's personally, I think that's hard on the eyes. 
I like the dark mode um, and I like some of the different uh, font options that are a little bit different. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the options and there are two ways to get there. We can still go in the same way that we went in to configure the interpreter and it will bring up options. Now it'll default to the interpreter tab, but you can get to the theme and font there as well. Okay, so that's one way to do it. And another way to do it is just to go up here to tools and options and you'll get the same window. Okay, <clears throat> so you can see that you have um, different themes that you can use. This is the default. See, and yep, there's the default light. I think that kind of hurts my eyes. So, again, I like the Raspberry Pi dark for the standard or for the um, for the user interface, and then I like the default dark for the editor and shell. Okay. So when I say shell over here, that's what this I/O refers to. So you can change your different fonts in, in both places, right? So if, if let's say I change this to Constantia, see it's a, it, it changes up here, but it doesn't do anything down here, right? Now personally, I like the Consolas and I like the size 13 font, but obviously we can change that as well. Um, and then of course we have the shell or IO font, which you can see that, that changed to a serif font down there and of course we can change that size as well um, but again I personally for the shell like to have a non serif font I'm a fan of Calibri which is really it's a Windows specific you help you'll have other options on the Mac as well so that's where you can change uh, the look and feel of this which is really where you're going to make you know any real changes there most of the time again you're not going to need to make any changes to uh, to the program it, it works just fine on its own all right so yeah that's really it for getting started you may need to restart Thani for the changes to take effect if you don't see it happen right away um, so yeah, so now that you've installed and configured your Thani, you're ready to start programming your Raspberry Pi Pico and dreaming up your own projects. Have fun!